Oh, hi. I'm the heretic. Let's not mince words. Net neutrality sucks. The principle is that internet service providers shouldn't interfere or discriminate with data that travels through the web. They should treat all data equally and deny nobody access to the internet. But that begs the question, who was being blocked from the internet? Who was being blocked from the internet? Nobody. This whole regulation was passed on a lie to solve a problem that didn't exist. There was some nonsense about Netflix slowing down, but Comcast, Verizon, and Netflix came to a deal on their own without the need for government. You know, like adults. But here's the real issue, the idea that data packages should all be treated equally. What a nice sounding platitude. The truth is that the mechanism that allocates bandwidth unneutrally is the same that allocates other finite goods, like food, water, and the electronic device you're using to watch this video with right now. What if we had neutral distribution of other goods, like say, neutral distribution of farmland? Well, here's the first problem. Farmland isn't neutral. Some lands are more fertile, experience different weather patterns, or are more susceptible to pest infestation. If the state imposes a farmland neutrality system, somebody gets the 10 acres of a lifeless dust bowl. You can see now the impossibility that is farmland neutrality. Plus, we know what happens when you try it. I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with draft starvation. Internet service isn't exempt from the laws of supply and demand. You want internet given to the most amount of people most efficiently? The net neutrality must die. Did I mention the proponents of these regulations are being played? Those ISPs, those evil, rich, white, corporate backcats and Comcast and AT&T are trying to stick it to through net neutrality? Well, they support net neutrality too. That's right. But don't take my word for it. Links in the description below. In addition, we have Nazi collaborator hedge fund manager George Soros throwing his rate around giving $200 million to pro-net neutrality organizations. Now why would they do this? It's about power. Control. They'll be the ones to determine what is neutral, and this means the elimination of dissenting voices and the taxation of online activity. Big businesses love regulation since they can afford it. But you know who can't afford it? their competitors. They're incentivized to lobby the state and get their people hired to the bureaucracy that is supposed to regulate them. This system of businesses essentially writing their own regulations is called regulatory capture, and it's what we can expect with net neutrality. But we can trust the government to keep their word and they'll be fair and impartial, right? Yeah, we can trust the same people who thought SOPA and PIPA were a good idea. Liberals, the people who will judge whether your internet activity is neutral will be appointed by Donald Trump. Think about that. But because ISPs might slow down websites and users, even though that's never happened prior to June 2015 ever, were asked to surrender control of the World Wide Web to the same people who couldn't build a functioning website with $2 billion. Besides, since June 2015, Facebook, Twitter, Google, and pretty much all of big tech has been super fair to conservatives and libertarians since net neutrality came into effect, haven't they? Oh wait. No, they haven't. Really makes you think. Oh, but I'm not done yet. Have you heard the argument? Oh, but in my area, I can only choose between two ISPs, therefore net neutrality. The reason there are only two competitors in your area is because for an ISP to lay down cable, they have to negotiate with the local government for a right of way or the ability to put down cables above and below private property. Similarly, they have to get contracts from public utilities to use, I'm sorry, rent space in underground ducts or on utility poles. Seeing the problem here? Utility companies and local governments are the gatekeepers that prevents new ISPs and kills competition, as local governments and utilities are the ones who get to decide what hoops a startup needs to jump through before they can get approval. If they can get approval. It's a cronious system of kickbacks. The government's the reason there are local cable duopolies, not Comcast. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot that Comcast does to make life hell for ISP startups. For example, bury a startup in frivolous lawsuits. But then again, that's only because of the status legal system. Needless to say, net neutrality will not solve these problems. Now let's just take a step back here. Has anyone asked why the FCC can do this? Literally three people who nobody voted for will decide whether or not we have a free and open internet. This is not right. It's not okay that some unelected bureaucrats get to dictate how some companies can use their property. That, my friends, is called tyranny. 
They should never have had this power to begin with. What were the framers thinking when they wrote the United States Constitution and gave the FCC unilateral power to write legislation without congressional or presidential approval? Oh wait, they didn't. Gee, it's almost like we live in a time where the United States government is unmoored from the limits imposed on it centuries ago, and it is only by the grace of God and the vigilance of an increasingly woke voting populace keeping the Overton window from lurching too far towards tyranny that we have been able to at least slow down the state's inexorable march towards totalitarianism, as is inevitable of all states, no matter how limited. Even if net neutrality is stricken down, it's only a matter of time before Democrats take back control of the FCC, and we're right back where we started. Yes, net neutrality must die, but that's only but gonna buy us another five minutes. The only lasting solution is to gut the FCC, or we'll be having this debate for the rest of our lives, or at least until the end of the fourth turning. Then again, if we're gutting bureaucracies, we shouldn't stop at the FCC. Oh, wait, what's a fourth turning? <laughs> I'll tell you all about it.